ele é um dos maiores colecionadores de Tolkien na comunidade. E eu vim até Essex, na Inglaterra, para bater um papo com ele e, é claro, mostrar a coleção todinha para vocês. Olá, Tolkien Talkers! Eu sou a Gilson Sim, jornalista correspondente do TT aqui no Reino Unido, e hoje eu estou a caminho da casa do Andrew Ferguson, mais conhecido como Trotter na comunidade tolkiana. E nesse primeiro vídeo eu vou bater um papo com ele. Mas antes se inscreva no nosso canal Tolkien Talk, no meu também, Gilson Sim, e também no Tolkien Guide, o canal do Trotter. Quando entrei na casa do Andrew, já fiquei maravilhada com a decoração e com as histórias sobre a coleção dele. E a nossa conversa tem início na origem do apelido Trotter. When I first started with that name, which was about 30 years ago, nobody really knew because they never read these. Trotters in here, here, here. That's when, right at the last minute, Tolkien changed the name to uh, to Strider. The reason he changed the name was so it was a hobbit. Mm. originally decided that when he changed Trotter to be a man who became Aragorn he did so trotting wasn't appropriate because that's what horses do so he called him Strider <laughs> instead so he changed the name uh you prefer him as a hobbit or as a man I, I, always, I always say that I, that I prefer him as a hobbit but I'm joking on that one because <laughs> it's very good it, it, it's much better yeah. if he was a hobbit I think in the book it wouldn't work because originally when the Lord of the Rings was written it was a book about hobbits So there wasn't really, and Gandalf, there wasn't really any, anybody else in it. So there was certainly no, no real men, because there's hardly any men at all in The Hobbit, like Bard, and the, but there's no other. They're all elves or dwarfs or hobbits. There's nothing else. You liked the character because you liked the name, the sound of it. Not, not everyone could say be called Aragorn because someone else has used that. <laughs> so you want to pick a more obscure name. On the Talking Guide, um, in particular, that, that is uh, the name that, 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 that I use. And I think most people uh, on there know, hopefully know Trotter is by now. You mentioned Talking Guide. Could you mm. talk a little bit about it? Uh, what do you do there? Just well, if the audience doesn't know it. Uh, well, I hope, I hope the audience <laughs> do know Of course uh, they know it. <laughs> uh, well, some of them might not. Um, Talking Guide was, was set it up, I think, in 2007, and it was set up by Jeremy Edmonds, who's called Euroloki on the uh, on the, the Talking Guide. Originally, it was set up as a collector's guide, so it really was there for people who like collecting Tolkien, mm -hmm. mad people like me who have <laughs> big, 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 big collections, and they want to get advice and they want to know about. Um, anything to do with collecting that, that's coming up so auctions new books uh, when covers change mad things like whether the, the color of the harper collins logo so for instance that one was gray at one point and now it, and it's and it's yellow on there so mm. people like to know that's changed yeah. over the last few years we've been trying to go away from it just being a collector's guide mm -hmm. to being something that the That the, the, the community can use. So it started off with things like a calendar. I don't know if you've ever yeah, seen the calendar. Of course. Um, that is something that um, that I find is very useful, and, and I think a anyone who likes talking would, would get some yeah. benefits um, out of that. So it just shows you any events that are coming up for the next uh, year or, or yeah. so on. And it's got. I used it to, yeah. to get to know the British Library event. Yes, it was that's yeah. on there. So we put things yeah. like that on there. Yeah. And when, when we find them, we put them on, um, they are heavily focused on being English. But I'm hoping over time we're going to try and expand this and so that other countries can put their own events on. Because nice. it's much easier if you can put it in, your, in yourself. Um, we also have a, a store. This is all the books primarily in English mm -hmm. that are in print at the moment that you can buy. If you go to, say, The Hobbit, they might have the paperback version of The Hobbit. On yeah. there and you can have a look and say well have I got that so we have all the different illustrators we have deluxe versions with super deluxe ones uh, every single one ebooks audio books that's an amazing work that you you've done to the community yeah. and well, the other big thing that we've really done on the site recently is is the talking guide to let it, some of them are published in the uh, the talking site which 
which has also been translated into Portuguese. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. But uh, there's a lot of unpublished uh, letters as well, so we're hoping at some point that HarperCollins might say, let's do another book yeah. of chocolate, because they are fascinating. We talked a little bit about about the trotter name. Could you talk a little bit about yourself? I mean, uh, the Andrew figure too, like... Uh, when I was at uh, when I was at school, this would have been when I was about four, five or six. My teacher uh, used to read uh, books in the afternoon, and there was only two books that I can remember him reading. And one was a UK book called Stig of the Dump, quite a famous book. But the other one was a book called The Hobbit. In 1976, uh, I bought a copy of The Hobbit and the uh, Lord of the Rings with my Christmas. Oh. It's actually a mistake in my book and uh, some of the pages were reprinted. So I didn't realise until I read it again and then I thought, this is I've, I've read this already, why, why is this, this, this exactly the same? Two chapters were exactly the same, they were printed twice. Oh, okay, yeah, huge so, mistake. Yeah. Yeah, and the bit that was missing was Tom Bombadil. So oh. there was no Tom Bombadil in you, the book when I first read it. <laughs> didn't know he existed. Yeah. I then went and wanted to read the rest of the book, and my mother was a librarian. Oh. So I, I used to be able to go to the library. Very helpful, right? Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. she would, and she would uh, let me know when any new Tolkien books came out. And, um, it runs in the family. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I bought uh, a book that had come out the previous year called mm. The Silmarillion. <laughs> and I tried to read it, but uh, failed miserably. Cause how I was, old were you uh, in that, uh, this time? How old was it? I was 11. Yeah, but Sumerian for 11-year-old boy? Yeah, it's not, yeah, yes, it's, it's yeah. not really... Uh, yeah. well, again, I didn't know anything about it either. I thought it would be the same as the, the whole yeah. world of the rings. You wanted to know more about this and magical it, world. Well, and... you, yeah, you, you sort of think it would be, be similar, but... And do you remember the feeling you, you, you've got when your teacher first read The Hobbit? Mm. Like, how oh, did I you just feel? Thought it was, I just thought it was a, just a fantastic... Well, he wrote it for his children, so mm -hmm. the idea is that there's like cliffhangers at the end of the chapters. So it does work for reading it for yeah. one chapter at a time. My favourite talking book is The Hobbit, which is unusual because a lot of people always go for The Lord of the Rings. Yeah. But it's The Hobbit, and I, I like that... Um, that one more than any of the uh, any of the other books. The British schools usually use uh, Tolkien's work in their in their daily daily routine, or they didn't when I was at school, but I think they do now. Hmm. Um, they uh, uh, Tolkien was sort of frowned upon at the time as just being a sort of fantasy writer, and it's not the sort of stuff that people should be reading. Hmm. Um, but that's all changed now. He is now a one of our great British authors that he, he is taught at, at schools. But I'm hoping that uh, primary school teachers for young children still read The Hobbit to them because I think that's a great thing to yeah. do. And I, I'd encourage any teacher, if you want to read a book to your class, read The Hobbit. And do you have the first uh, book, the, the Hobbit book, the first edition that you've bought? Oh, I do. Yes, you have it. Yeah? Yes. Can you show us? That's the first Hobbit that I ever bought. That's the first one? That's the first one. Can I see it? You can, yes. A few more since then. have just nowadays just seen the films and not not read the uh, not read the books which is different from when I first read it because hardly anyone had read him at all really in comparison yeah. with uh, with the population in those days it was quite difficult to find these people but nowadays with the internet and stuff like it's that it's fascinating it's so much more it's so much easier to uh, to get to know people who who have a common interest yes, it could be a lonely path in the past, but nowadays it, it has changed. It's nice to be able to, uh, to, to say, do research into things. I've talked about the Tolkien's letters. To actually, that, that's something that I'm fascinated by. But when I go out and look at these letters and add them to the date, it actually it doesn't just help me, it helps the whole community because they can now find out more about uh, mm. letters that Tolkien uh, has written. It's a nice community. 
curious actually with this next question maybe we can talk a little bit but the um, talking films are being uh, uh, the, the series is being adapted and we had the Peter Jackson movie so it's growing and yeah. growing new fans are coming and it's important to have the adaptations uh, coming uh, did you like the adaptations the movies the series I, I liked the some of the adaptations I, I really liked my favourite adapt adaption is the BBC Radio. Sort of the Rings, Peter Jackson films were, were, were really good. And there's some, obviously there's some issues with them, but there's issues with all adaptions. The Hobbit films I thought were terrible. <laughs> uh, but I don't think I'm the only person who thinks that. <laughs> they were, I think if it had been one film, I need stuck a bit more to the book. I would. I might quite liked it, but mm. not three films. It was just. It was just too much. Things like the Rings of Power. For me, the problem with the Rings of Power is it's not really Tolkien at all. Really, it's it's somebody else writing it. Even Christopher Tolkien it was not uh, as good a writer. He acknowledged that as his father was, and I'm just so grateful that, though that, that that Christopher did manage to uh, publish so much extra material of his mm -hmm. father's that we have so much to look at. If if you like uh, adaptions and you please. Go and read the books because I think you'll like them as well. You were born in the UK and mm. for me I was born in, in Brazil and we don't actually see so many products or references and we see it here. It was a huge huge shock when I moved to the UK and I could see the landscape. It's like oh my god it's Tolkien here. Really like a dream come true because I could enter to Tolkien's world. So it's a huge privilege to be here. That's why I like to show and talk to people like you because it's a connection to the audience in Brazil and Latin America. That So I'm curious to know um, where uh, where can you see Tolkien uh, in your daily routine in Essex or in London or in England or other places you go? I think you can see Tolkien. You, you, you made the, the, the main thing is the, is the landscape. Tolkien, when he's writing about uh, Middle Earth, um, Middle Earth originally, uh, well, he didn't say this, but his his, his publisher and his biographer, some various other people said that, that the whole thing really is is to write a, uh, a a legendary story about England, and England is the centre of the mythology to begin with. If you actually look at a map of the Shire, uh, the map of Middle Earth, where the Shire is, that is England. Um, so what you're looking at is what Tolkien thought was the Shire. Tolkien was was trying to come up with something for England because um, after the, the, the Norman Conquest in 1066, um, the, the language in, in, um, in, in England, the tradition changed to, uh, to be more French and Latin, and the Anglo-Saxon bit disappeared, and we lost a lot of the stories. So Tolkien was trying to write them uh, because they weren't there, because th there weren't many stories around. So yes, I think you can see it everywhere when when you when when you look at the the, the, the landscape. The hobbits are meant to be English people. Whether that whether that's nice or not, I don't know. Because some of them are a bit of stupid. Of course it is. Well, some of them are no. stupid now, but I I I do quite like uh, you know, that they're, they're meant to. And he said that he was a hobbit. You can also see it in terms of the language that Tolkien used, because Tolkien was using um, languages like um, Old English, uh, Middle Middle English to a certain degree, Old Norse. Now regarding your collection, uh, yeah. we this first video we're gonna talk about just for audience to get to know a little bit about you. But uh, I wanted to give audience a glimpse on your collection, so we can see like huge collection here, but there's more. What is the size of this collection? Um, it's uh, it's over a thousand items. Thousand items. Uh, the rings I've got. Uh, about 175 copies of the Lord of the Rings, oh, no. about 125 copies of The Hobbit. And you organise all of them, like everything is like, as you can see here, you have the names of the bouquets, the numbers of it. I have a spreadsheet with them all on. Of course you do have well, I need to know where they are. One of the problems, if you have a big collection like this, um, you can often see something and think, oh, I'll buy that. <laughs> and then you've already got it. 
because you've forgotten. So I can <laughs> tell now on my spreadsheet, I can see exactly what's here. There's actually stuff you behind. The collection, there's things you? behind here as well. Okay, so thank you so much, Andrew, no, for, sorry, but I for this, that. this chat. It was, it was great, great recording this. Uh, I always love talking about talking, and I think the uh, please subscribe to. Uh, to the channel it's um, it's a great channel to subscribe to and also please consider subscribing to the talking guide youtube channel and visiting the talking guide website which is talkingguide.com thank you thank you so much